I'd like to ask the question, at least I'd like to address the question. What is the main link between security strategy and resource management? Let's recall first that there are three main pillars of national security strategy. It's a recap, this is something that uh, we all already know. We usually start by defining the ends, our goals and objectives. That is to say, what is our destination? Where do we want to be in 10, 20, 50, 100 years? What should our society look like? And what are the concrete achievements we must realize in the economic realm, in the security domain, in education, science, technology, in the diplomatic arena? What are some our, so what are our concrete goals? Once we know all of that, we are basically pretty close to defining the ends. We, that's where we begin. We begin with the ends, with defining the ends. And then we need to look at the ways. We need to look at the modalities, the actions, and the tools we will use to achieve our ends, to meet our goals and objectives. So we start with the ends, and then we focus on the ways. How do we get to our destination? What steps, what paths must we take to get there? Another way to look at this is by asking the question, how do we organize ourselves to achieve our objectives. Within the economic realm, for example, you may ask the question, are we going to organize our economy along a free market path, a free market structure? Are we going to allow the state to have an important role in the economy? Are we going to have a mix of both? In the, in the security domain, we may ask the question, what's, what's our primary function? Is it defense of the homeland? Is this where we're going to focus our efforts? The defense of the homeland? Or will we project force? Is a good offense the best defense? Or are we going to focus on international commitment to global security? If there is international security, if there's global security, we are by definition more secure. Is that how are we going to achieve security? In the area of science and technology, for example, we may want to ask the question, do we lead or do we follow? Well, if we lead, if we want to lead, uh, we may want to invest in higher education or we may just follow and send our best and brightest to study abroad. Uh, don't have to invest uh, in science and technology because uh, we'll send our best and brightest to the United States or to Germany or France to study. In the diplomatic arena, we may want to ask the question, how important is it for us to have friends around the world. How do, how do we develop those friendships, those relationships, and how do we sustain them? So these are the types of questions uh, we may want to ask when it comes to defining the steps, defining the paths to achieve uh, the ends uh, we have defined at the beginning. But the, the definition of the ends and the definition of the ways doesn't usually fall in our laps. 
This is up to the policy makers, this is up to the politicians. People like you and I deal with the third leg of strategy. That is means, the means, the resources. That's the area where we, uh, th this is the realm, this is the domain within which uh, people like you and I uh, operate. And let me be, be very blunt. Without means, there's no strategy. The politicians and the policy makers can devise and design beautiful plans, uh, beautiful policies. They do not a strategy make until and unless you have the means, the resource, uh, the ways. It's as simple as that. The execution of the strategy requires means requires resources. And here we're talking about financial resources. Here we're talking about human resources. And we cannot discount, of course, the physical resources that we all need uh, to be able to, uh, to fulfill our tasks. Now, the point that needs not be, uh, we don't need to remind ourselves of it because it's so obvious, is that resources are always scarce. Resources are always limited. But as we just saw, uh, the execution of national strategy takes place along many ways. The execution of national strategy takes place along many paths. As a result, there's always competition for scarce resources by the agencies tasked with the execution of different aspects of national security strategy. In other words, most agencies within the security sector are allocated less than ideal levels of resources to perform, to perform their assigned tasks. The example that Ambassador Bellamy was, uh, was given is not the norm. It's not the norm. Uh, the the uh, uh, instances where there's an overabundance of resources uh, it's, it's not the norm, in fact, uh, it's the exception. And of course, we need to heed uh, Ambassador Bellamy's warning uh, very, very uh, seriously. Uh, now, because the resources allocated to agencies tasked with, a, with, uh, with, the, uh, with the job of implementing national security strategy are not ideal. Even in the best of times, security resources must be managed efficiently. Also because instinctively, uh, taxpayers know that wasteful spending uh, is detrimental to the pursuit uh, of national security strategy. Uh, we all, we don't actually need to have degrees in economics to instinctively understand the notion of opportunity costs. So, it is the efficient resource management that ensures effective execution of national security strategy. And for me, here, this is the link. For me, this is the link. It's the efficient resource management that ensures effective execution of national security strategy. In Africa, security resources are scarce because the means and the resources available to governments are in very short supply. I like to say that 
Africa is not Africa is not poor. Quite on the contrary, Africa is very rich. Africans are poor. Africans are poor. It's not Africa uh, that's poor. In concrete terms, this means that governments do not really have much in terms of resources, especially financial resources, to allocate to the security sector. Now in Africa, the situation is made even worse because the need for both security and development are very high. <coughs> Secure resources in Africa are not only short supply, but they have not always been managed very efficiently. Not only do we have very few resources allocated for security, how we've been managed those resources traditionally in Africa in the post-colonial time um, has not been uh, very, very efficient. Why is that? For me, the key reason pertains to the very narrow definition of security. In Africa, we have, we have been defining security very, very narrowly. We've defined security in terms of the security of the state, territorial integrity, focusing on protecting the state from external aggression. We have also defined security very narrowly in terms of regime security. It's the security of the regime. And often, I would say too often, we define security in terms of the security of the leader. I. I I, I, I'm always amazed when I go to Africa, in some cases, and let me digress here for, for just a second. No, I, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a professor, I can't really speak without digressing once or twice. Uh, occasionally one goes to Africa and sees something fairly uh, peculiar. I've seen in, in a couple of occasions, uh, troops position maybe you know a hundred yards two or three troops in full combat gear you know, every hundred yards or so for miles and miles and miles and I once asked you know very undiplomatically well, why is that what's what's going on here and I said well it's probably the president that's ready to to travel and I said wow that's 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 uh that's quite something. That's quite something. Uh, so there's a whole military apparatus being deployed uh, because the president uh, is is going to um, is going to to drive by, disregarding completely traffic jams in a city. Uh, and well, anyway, I could go on and on and on. Uh, but just to make the point. Uh, that oftentimes is the security of the leader that has been the, fo that, that has been the focus. Uh, and, and our definition has been so narrow uh, to that point. What have been some of the consequences of that? Well, first and foremost, massive misallocation and misutilization of security resources. What we have in Africa are reasonably well-equipped armies. Reasonably well-equipped armies. But the other components of the, the security sector are usually very poorly resourced. You have the armies doing very well, but even the navies, you know, it's almost as if uh, the navies are an afterthought. And again, uh, 
some of the work that the Africa Center has been doing in Africa in you know, the past few years has been on maritime security. And it's absolutely amazing how many African governments are not paying attention to the threats coming from the maritime domain. It's almost as if uh, those threats do not exist. Well, now, uh, some, some countries, both on the East part and on the West part of Africa, uh, have realized that you need to invest on the maritime sector, the maritime security sector, uh, because uh, if you do not, uh, the threats emanating uh, from the maritime domain uh, can really pose serious security challenges. But maritime forces are not the only forces that are underfunded. The police, very underfunded. And when a country after country, when there are domestic disturbances, the police is not able to respond, or it responds very poorly. Why is it? Well, I, I certainly can understand that. Uh, because the police is under-resourced. The gendarmerie, border patrols, customs, prisons, I could go on and on and on. Those aspects, those elements of the security sector are poorly resourced because we have misallocated the scarce resources that we have uh, available. Because security resources have been misallocated and misutilized, many African states and their leaders do not feel very secure. Equally importantly, many African citizens do not feel very secure. Uh, since the 1990s, uh, the notion of security has been expanded to include the citizen in Africa. But the resources available to African governments to provide this more inclusive security has not expanded. So you can see how uh, we have a dilemma and it's up to us, those who are entrusted uh, with managing security resources, uh, that really have to uh, resolve uh, this dilemma. Just to conclude, let me say one or two things so that we can have time for discussion. Let me say that the demand for security by both states and their citizens will continue to grow. The resources available to provide this security will continue to remain scarce. Because countries uh, in the developed world are also facing some fiscal difficulties, chances are that their ability to provide uh, resources uh, to their friends in Africa will come under severe strain. This, in my view, necessitates even greater efficiency in how we manage the resources entrusted upon us to provide security to the state and to the citizen. I thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions.